Hello, welcome back. In biology, we use diverse type of statistical analysis. Using R, you can actually uh, perform those analysis very easily. I will not go in detail of each of those statistical analysis. In this lecture, as an example, we will learn how to perform t-test and ANOVA. So, let us take two examples uh, for t-test and ANOVA and perform using R studio. I will, I am using R studio, but you can use R or native R also, because these functions are available by default to native R also. So, let us start and with the t t-test and see how to perform that. So, I want to perform in this example, I want to perform t-test on a data set where I, we are treating cells with something, suppose uh, some molecule or something else, some, uh, so that uh, we can change the growth behavior of the plant. right? So, we are measuring the height of the plant as a measure of growth and we have two samples, one is uh, control and or another one is treated one and we want to see whether they are behaving differently or not. This is a very common example in experiments where you have a control sample, where you have a treated sample and you want to see whether the difference observed between these two is statistically significant or not. In that case, we usually use t-test and I have a, a data in CSV file format. Uh, so, I will read that CSV file and then I will perform t-test. So, let us uh, do this step by step. So, the first thing that I have to do is to read the data. Uh, again, I will use the read.csv function. I hope by now uh, you are habituated with this read.csv function. My input is uh, the arguments are uh, plan.csv file that uh, has that file and I am keeping the header equal to true because it has a header uh, and I will assign this to a variable h dot data. So, I have to work on this h dot data. So, so let uh, read it. Uh, so, I have read it. Uh, now, you can see uh, the data here. Let me click and open. It is a two column data. As I said, uh, I have untreated uh, plant, control plant and treated plant, treated with something. We uh, do not bother about that. So, uh, how many samples are there? 10, 10 samples are there. It is also written here in the environment that I have 10 observation for two variables. Let me uh, close this data. Uh, now, I have read the data. Uh, I want to do the first thing as I said, once you get a data, it is better to check the summary of that. So, I can call my uh, uh, helpful function called summary to calculate that summary, get the summary. And let me check the summary here. So, I have two variables untreated and treated and the minimum and maximum are given. So, uh, uh, treated height, untreated height varies from 62.5 to 90.3, whereas for treated you can easily see the minimum is also higher and the maximum is also higher. The mean value for untreated control plant is 76.79, whereas the mean for the treated population is 101.29. So, obviously, it seems on an average uh, the treatment has increased the height of the plant, but we have to do statistical test for that uh, to be sure that it is actually statistically significant or not. Uh, before we go into that, uh, let me plot this diag uh, this data so that uh, you know it, it becomes much more uh, uh, cl clear that what we are doing why we are doing a statistical test now if you have this type of two sample uh, two case data uh, you can actually make a bar plot uh, some but sometime it is better to draw a box plot we will have separate lecture where we will discuss how to use r to draw bar plot uh, then uh, box chart and all these thing but here uh, by default, I am using the box plot and we do not go in detail of those box plot now, just for our today's purpose, we will simply draw it. So, what I am doing, uh, I will draw the box plot. Let me increase this plot area. So, to draw block a box plot by default, uh, R has some function, a function called box plot itself and it takes multiple arguments. I have used some of those. Let me uh, briefly say what are those. Uh, the first two arguments are the data. So, I have two variables. So, this first one is h dot data dollar uh, symbol and untreated. That means, I am taking the untreated data. This is the first variable and then I am extracting the treated uh, data. This is my second variable because I want two data uh, to be plotted in the same plot. right? And then uh, I have to name those. So, I am using C function to create a vector or list and the names are untreated and treated. 
and the variable I have assigned as names and the y axis or the vertical axis which is uh, detected by this y lab, y label will be high top plants that is what I have specified. I have given limit for the values from where to where I want to plot because uh, otherwise if the plot may uh, look bit wrong uh, and then I want to use the light gray as color. Let us uh, draw it, it will be clear to you why I am using these arguments. So, I have drawn it, it is bit uh, uh, distorted, so it, let me zoom it. Okay, so, here we have right. So, if you remember I have named this the, the horizontal axis for these two variables are untreated and treated and I have named or labeled the vertical axis that by Y lab for height of plants and the box plot has been drawn and in box plot these dark line horizontal lines here in both the boxes are the median values. Uh, now, looking at this data you can easily see and if you remember the mean values that we have calculated for untreated and treated samples, uh, obviously there is difference and possibly it shows that the treated sample has a higher height. So, that means treatment of this uh, plant with that particular treatment is increasing the height of the plant, uh, but there is also overlap is not it. Uh, you can see this region we have overlap. So, I have to do statistical test to check whether this difference between the means of treated and untreated samples is really statistically significant or not right. Uh, so, I will do t test let us go to that uh, to uh, understand and perform it. Now, I have to perform t test what type of t test I will perform I will perform unpaired uh, to, to test uh, t test I will perform unpaired two sample t test actually. So, before you perform any t test we have to remember that t test is a parametric test. That means, inherently it uh, we have a belief uh, that this data that I am analyzing is normally distributed is an assumption basic assumption for uh, this t test right. So, I have to check whether my data itself is normally distributed or not. We have a lecture on uh, t test earlier. So, you may look into it there is another issue here that is uh, that the both the sample here should have equal variance otherwise I cannot perform t test with equal variance uh, we have some other uh, options for that. So, what I will do before we jump start the t test I have to check whether my data is normally distributed or not and whether both this treated untreated sample has equal variance or not. Let us start with checking the normality. Normality of a data set can be checked by different method what I will use here is called the Sapiro Wilk method and R has an inbuilt function to calculate that. What this, uh, this function will do? This function is called Sapiro dot test and it will take the data as an argument and it will perform a statistical test which itself has a null hypothesis. If you remember t test, ANOVA all these things will have null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. In Sapiro test normality test the null hypothesis is that the data is normally distributed fine. So, let us perform the uh, no, normality test Sapiro test on both of my variable. So, what I will do I will take one variable at a time and I will perform that that is why for the first Sapiro test Sapiro dot test I am giving h dot data I am taking the untreated variable only right. So, I am using the dollar sign then untreated I am writing. So, it will perform the test only on that untreated uh, variable the first column of my data and the second line here is doing the same test on the treated sample. So, let me execute one by one. So, uh, the result is here in the console uh, it is saying that the p value focus on the p value is 0 0.3726 it is quite high is not it. So, that means the p value is very high that means I cannot reject the null hypothesis. As p is very high, p value is very high, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. That means the data is normally distributed because that is my null hypothesis. I am happy my untreated sample has normal distribution. Let me execute that for the uh, next one, the other data, other variable, the treated variable. Here again I get the p value is 0 0.1867. So, again it is high right. So, I can easily uh, conclude that I have to accept the null hypothesis I cannot reject it. So, if I accept the null hypothesis I have to accept that the data is normally distributed. So, I am happy both of my variables are normally distributed. 
Now, I will check whether they have equal variance or not. right? To do that, I will use again a inbuilt function. So, what I will do? I will use var dot test function, var dot test, fun uh, test function and what it will be doing is that it will perform a f test to check whether my two variable vary the untreated and treated va variables they have equal variance or not. And again as it is a statistical test, I should have a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis by default in this case is that variances of two samples are equal. I am considering that the variances of both the samples are equal and I am using var dot test function to perform it. It will be taking these two variable untreated and treated as my argument. So, here I perform that. Let me enlarge this console. Okay. It, is, it has given lots of information, but the most important information for me is here is the p value and it is saying 0.5137. So, this p value is very high that means, I cannot reject my null hypothesis. Now, let me look back what is my null hypothesis. My null hypothesis is the variances of two samples are equal and my f test is saying I cannot reject it. That means, my variances of these two variables are equal. right? So, I can actually proceed and perform t test. The itself the test result also say the same thing here uh, in a different way. It tells that the alternate hypothesis is the ratio, true ratio of variances is not equal to 1. Remember, if the variances are equal, which is my null hypothesis, then the ratio should be 1. So, alternate uh, hypothesis is that the ratio is not equal to 1 and in this case, uh, we are rejecting uh, this uh, alternate hypothesis and we are accepting the null hypothesis because the p value is very high. So, now I have uh, completed my equal variance test, I have completed my normality test, the data has passed both these tests. So, I can now go for the simple unpaired two sample t test and r has a function to do that. So, here I will perform the t test using the inbuilt uh, uh, function called t dot test, t dot test. So, the null hypothesis here is that the mean of the untreated sample is equal to mean of the treated sample. right? My belief is they are different. So, that is my alternate hypothesis and I want to reject, I wish I can reject the null hypothesis after this t test. right? So, uh, this is my null, null, null hypothesis that both, both variable treated and untreated has the same mean and I am performing t test using t dot test function. What are the argument? Okay, one argument at the end I have written is the variance are equal, variances are equal. right? So, that is written as var dot equal equal to true. There are other arguments also, I have not uh, used those. But the first and the most important argument is obviously, what are the variables? Okay, The first variable is the treated sample, the data of that and the second data is the untreated one. So, I have to perform the t test on these two data and it has to, it will consider that the variances are equal. So, let me perform the t test. Here is the result. The result has lots of things. Let us focus only first on the p value. The p value is very low 0 0.001176. So, even if I consider 0 0.2, 0 0.001 as my level of signif significance, then also oh, I can easily reject my null hypothesis. right? So, what is my null hypothesis? My null hypothesis if I go that the mean of treated sample and untreated samples are equal. So, as the p value is very small, I can reject the null hypothesis. That means, I will accept the alternate hypothesis where it says that the means are different. right? So, that is what it is written here. Alternative hypothesis is the true difference in mean is not equal to 0. So, we accept that. So, if I again open this figure, I can say that this treated uh, data uh, has the mean which is significantly different from the untreated one. That means, treatment has a statistically significant effect on the height of the plant. That is all for the t test. Let me first move into ANOVA analysis of variance. Again, I have a planned data set. Uh, 
and what is happen uh, what people have done here in this data set is that suppose you have a control set of plant and then you have uh, two other uh, groups one is treatment one and treatment two consider those treatment are maybe treatment same treatment but with different concentration at different doses and then you are checking the yield and you are measuring the yield in terms of a uh, dry weight of the plant right this data set is by default present in your r data set so i will be using that right and now remember in this case then there are three variables control three cases three type of samples right so control uh, then you have treatment condition 1 treatment condition 2 so i cannot use t test i have to do anova analysis of variance and i will perform one way variance because there is only one way uh, the thing has been changed right we have changed the treatment condition one type of treatment condition so i will perform one way anova so uh, the as i said the data set is a plant growth data set present by default in your r uh, build uh, you must have in your computer by now if you have installed r so let me load that data so what i will do i will uh, load this data and assign that data to a variable called d i have loaded it so let us check the uh, data how it is Okay, it is two column data. The first one is weight and second one is group. And in the group, we have written control, control, CTL, RL, those are control, then treatment condition 1, then treatment 2. So, all these group or called factors or labels are in one column, right? Those are labeled there and their corresponding weights are also given in the first column. So, now I have to perform ANOVA on this. To do so, before I move, let us look into the summary of that data, right? Uh, so, I will use that again the summary function. Okay. Now, I have two columns. So, the first column is the weight. Uh, the minimum weight is 3.59, maximum is 6.3, means median other things are given. And the group variable, we have three type of uh, factors or three type of sample control. There are 10 numbers of them treatment to 1, 10 numbers of them, treatment to 10 numbers of them. Before I move into ANOVA, just like in t-test, it will be good if I visualize it. And again, I will use the box plot. So, now I am uh, plotting using the same box, uh, box plot function. As I said, we will discuss uh, how to do bo box plot and bar plot separately in another video. Uh, here, what we are saying is that uh, here I have written at uh, the first argument, I have written as weight and then I have given this tilde and written as group. So, it means the R understand that okay, group weight is the response variable or dependent variable and group is the independent variable. right? So, if I have weight as independent variable or response, so it should be in my vertical axis, whereas a group is the independent variable, right? so it should be in the horizontal axis. So, that is how it will understand. The data is the D variable y label means vertical axis label i want to write dry weight of plants and i want to keep the width of each of these uh, box as equal so that's why uh, so not equal i can I want to change it depending on the uh, size of the sample so i have kept uh, width equal to true variable width equal to true and the color i want light gray so let me draw this Let us zoom, here is the data. So, you can see uh, very nicely this box plot actually represent uh, the, their mean and behavior as well as the dispersion of the data in each of the categories. right? We have quite a, a bit dispersion here. Uh, the median values of treatment 1 seems lower than the control 1, whereas in treatment 2, the median value is higher. But each of these group has quite a bit dispersion. So, now the question comes to my mind is there any effect of this treatment? I have two treatment groups, maybe with different doses, but is there any effect of this treatment on the dry weight or the yield of this plant? Right. So, when I mean any effect, I mean whether any statistically significant effect or not and to get that, I will perform one way ANOVA. So, how can I do that? Okay, performing one way ANOVA is very easy and you have an inbuilt function uh, to do that. The function is called one way dot test. 
Now, it is a statistical test. So, obviously, there must be null hypothesis and uh, alternate hypothesis. For a null hypothesis, the ob, uh, in ANOVA, the null hypothesis will be obviously uh, that the all means of all treatment groups should be equal. That is what is written here. The null hypothesis is mean of control is equal to mean of treatment 1 equal to mean of treatment 2. If I accept the null hypothesis after this test, that means I have to consider that these dis differences that I see in the plot, these little differences that I see are not statistically significant. But if I reject, then I have to accept that the difference that I have seen are statistically significant. That means, there is a considerable statistically considerable effect of the treatment on the uh, yield of the plant. So, uh, what is the function I am using? As I said, it is one dot test and the arguments are, the arguments are written like this, weight tilde group. Again, I am telling uh, the function is that see weight is the dependent variable or the response variable and whereas, the group is the predictor or independent variable. So, uh, I want to see uh, how the weight of each group is varying and I want to perform the ANOVA for that and the data is equal to D and the variances are equal. So, that is why I have considered written is a true var dot equal equal to true. I am specifying that yes, the variances of these da three group of data that is controlled uh, treated 1, treated 2, they are equal. I have not shown the variance check test here. I have performed it uh, before uh, I picked up this data. I have also performed the same uh, normality test. Data is also normally uh, distributed. Whenever you do this type of parametric test like ANOVA or t-test, you should perform those the way I have shown for t-test case. So, let us perform the ANOVA because I have already checked they are normally distributed and their variance is equal. So, if I perform the test, here is my output in the console. Uh, is one single line statement which is very clear. I have to look into, you can look into the uh, f value obviously, if you want to look into the f table, uh, it is the f, f test, but I will go directly to the p value. The p value is 0 0.0159, so roughly 0 0.016. So, if I consider the cutoff value as 0 0.05, right? So, then I, I can say this p value is lesser than that. Uh, uh, cut off right 0.5. So, in that case I have to reject the null hypothesis. So, what is my null hypothesis? My null hypothesis is that the mean of control, mean of treatment 1, mean of treatment 2, all the means of these three treatment conditions are equal and as the p value for my ANOVA test has come less than my cut off 0 0.05. Right. So, I am rejecting that null hypothesis. That means, that the difference that you see in the mean value of this three treatment group are statistically significant. That is how we perform an ANOVA on this type of data. That is all for this video. In this video, we have learned t-test and ANOVA. T-test and ANOVA will have different versions, different varieties, right? And in R, you can actually perform all of them. There are different functions. Each function have lots of arguments. And they are apart from T-test and ANOVA, there are other type of test also, which are available in R and used by biologists. If this course is not a biostatistics course. That is why we are not go going in detail of all of these statistical tests. But I hope with this simple uh, demonstration, uh, you will be able to move forward and learn other uh, statistical tests whenever you need to do those, perform those, right? Okay, that is all for this video. Uh, thank you for learning with me today. See you in the next video.